I'm going to briefly talk you through Share It, Shelf It, Shout It, Shed It, which is my alliterative way of thinking about how to help children manage worries. So this can be super helpful if you've got a child who needs to transition from a head full of worries and anxieties to needing to get on with the rest of their day. Perhaps they've arrived at school and they've got lots and lots of stuff on their mind uh, and you need them to, to, to be able to continue with the day. So we might try share it, shelf it, shout it, shed it. So I'll just talk you through what each of these kind of broadly means and then you'll go away and apply it in whatever way works best for you. So share it. One thing we can do with our worries is to share them, to get them out of our head and into the world. Sharing it doesn't necessarily have to mean telling someone, though it could. So sharing it might be talking to someone. Equally, it might be sharing it with a journal. We might write it down. We might draw it. We might talk to our cat. Say hello, Mork. You're quite good at having my worries shared with you, aren't you? She's not very keen on that today. But so we share it somehow. The key thing here is to, to give it form, to take it out of our head and share it with the world somehow. Just naming those worries makes it much, much more possible to tame them. Name it to tame it. Um, shelf it. This is about taking those worries and saying, these are really valid concerns. These deserve some of my time. Perhaps they need to have a conversation had about them with a trusted adult. But right now isn't that moment because right now I need to go to maths, say. And so we're going to shelf that worry and make an appointment with the worry for later. So this might be about saying, OK, it sounds like you've got a lot on your mind and it would be really helpful to talk about that. How about if we meet at 10.30? Or we might be writing that worry down or drawing it and putting it in a worry monster or a worry box and saying we're going to come back to that at a later time. This is also a, an agreement we can make with ourselves saying, okay, I've got this thing on my mind, but right now I want to focus on playing Lego with my friend. And so for now, I'm going to take that worry and I'm going to put it to one side and I will come back to it later. It sounds a bit cuckoo, but it actually really, really works for lots of people, particularly having that appointment with the worry so we know we'll come back to it. As an aside, we might actually want to boundary how long we spend uh, with that worry at the time, particularly if it's something that we can't change. So for example, it might be that we have suffered a loss or a bereavement and we need some time to work with that worry, to feel sad, to sit with those feelings. But we might want to bookend that and say, I'm going to allow myself to feel those feelings and really process it for like 20 minutes and then I'm going to move on. Sometimes bookending it and having a, 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 a sort of schedule for it can be uh, at remarkably helpful. So share it, shelf it, shout it. This is if we've got kind of a load of anxious energy that is kind of bounding around inside us and needs to get out. So it's not just about shouting, although shouting can be helpful, um, but we might scream into a pillow. We might do jumping jacks. We might run laps around the playground. We might use our fidget toys. We might do any one of a number of things that helps to take that energy that's fizzing around inside us in a kind of gnawing, bubbly, un yeah, way. <laughs> I ran out of words there, but you know what I mean. And it helps just to get it out, work that anxious energy off, because the racing certainty is this child is not going to be able to focus on countries of the world in their next lesson if they are bouncing off the walls with anxious energy. So we need to find ways to get that out. And it's different for every child. So uh, worth just knowing what works for this particular kid. But sometimes shout it get it out, get that anxiety, that energy out, run it off, uh, get it out in some way. And then shed it. Uh, this is acknowledging the fact that some worries are not a child's to carry and that they need to shed those worries and pass them on to somebody whose concern it actually is. So if a child comes into school or comes to you with a worry that you think, gosh, that's an adult responsibility. This is not something you should be worrying about. I'm going to take that from you. That child will need reassurance that you're actually going to deal with it. They're going to need to know what happens next. So you might want to follow up with them and say, I took that worry and I've done X about it. Or please trust that I have, you know, taken the next steps. Let them know that you've actually done something. Then they'll trust you again next time. But the, the key thing here is that worry is very, very heavy burden for you to carry. It's not your worry to be carrying anyway. Let me please take it from you so they can shed it. So your shiz are share it, shelf it, shout it, 
shed it. So your child who's very worried and needs to transition into another activity, uh, so it's not making the worry go away, we're just temporarily finding ways to transition into the rest of our day. We share it, get it out in the world somehow, talk about it, write about it, draw about it, talk to your cat about it. We shelf it, we make an appointment with that worry for later, we say, this worry matters, but right now I'm going to do other things. We shout it, we find some way to expend that anxious energy to work out the fizz that's inside us, or we shed it and we say, this worry is not mine to carry, and it gets passed on to someone for whom that is their responsibility. I hope there are some helpful ideas in here. Uh, if you like it, please share it. And if you've got ideas that you'd like me to be looking at in future videos, then please let me know. Until next time, bye.